Hello friends, we'll be discussing an illustration which will be related to calls in advance now. This will be again one of the part whereby we'll be discussing about call scenarios, interest paid on calls in advance, calls in advance in basic. So when we speak about calls in advance, we basically understand that one of the applicants or few of the applicants must be giving out certain amount in advance itself. That means if a face value of 10 rupees has been divided into 2 rupees on application, 3 rupees on allotment and again 2.5 and 2.5 on first and final call accordingly. So there might be certain applications or there might be certain applicants who might be just giving out the whole face value money in advance. For such applicants, this process is known as calls in advance. So basically they're giving out the whole amount before even we calling up for those allotment and first and final call, they're giving that amount beforehand. So whenever such situation arises, we are ideally supposed to go ahead and provide an interest on the amount that is being provided by them. So that calculation is different. However, whenever calls in advance comes in picture, interest on calls in advance is also one of the basic important feature of that specific concept. So let's figure out in the illustration, what do we have and how do we tackle this calls in advance in this illustration? Now, the illustration refers to the date of 1st of Jan 2011 related to Reebok Limited. So, on 1st of Jan 2011, Reebok Limited issued 25,000 equity shares at Rs 10 each, which were payable as follows. On application, an applicant had to pay Rs 5. On allotment, Rs 3. And on final call, Rs 2. Applications were received for 30,000 equity shares. So the issue was done for 25,000. Applications were received for 30,000. Clear case of oversubscription here. Now, excess money, whichever was there with us, was refunded immediately. Now, Mr. D, who was allotted 1,000 shares, or rather the person who was allotted 1,000 shares here, he paid the final call money as well the allotment money at the same time that means while he was paying the allotment money he also paid the final call money as well along with that specific amount itself that means that specific thing is calls in advance here so for thousand shares instead of paying three rupees per share he paid five rupees per share so that means additionally two thousand rupees he have given an addition or rather an advance related to the call which hasn't been made yet the rest all amount was duly received. We have to go ahead and figure out the journal entries here. So while we are passing the journal entries, the first entry that will be passing here is referred to the application money that we have received regarding 30,000 shares. So 30,000 multiplied by the application money per share, which is 5 rupees. Now, after this specific entry, we are supposed to go ahead and pass the refund entry for additional 5,000 shares that we have received. Ideally, we should only 25,000 shares, but we have received the application money for 30,000. So, as in the question they have mentioned, that whatever additional money we have received, you have refunded that amount, we have to go ahead and make the refund there and there itself. So basically we have received 1,50,000 as application money out of that we have subtracted 25,000 that means that specific amount has been refunded so the balance that we have is 1,25,000 now can be moved to the share capital so application money will now move to the share capital account. Now the next entry will be the allotment due entry. So that means whatever amount we are supposed to receive on the terms of allotment of 25,000 shares multiplied by the allotment money will be the amount that we are supposed or rather we are expecting that much amount. So 
So the entry that we have passed here is share allotment account debit to share capital. That is the due amount. Now when it comes to received, we are supposed to mention a different entry here. Now ideally we are supposed to receive 75,000 but we will receive somewhere around a total of 77,000. If you remember, we discussed about one person, Mr. D, who had 10,000 or rather who had 1,000 shares with him. He was supposed to pay 3 rupees on allotment but he paid 3 rupees plus the additional 2 rupees on final call and he cleared off the total balance. That means he paid 5,000 in total out of which 2,000 is additional. So if you are supposed to receive 75,000 and you have received 2,000 in addition that means 77,000 is the total amount that you have received here. So in terms of bank's account it will be 77,000, 75,000 will be credited towards share allotment and the balance will be 2,000 calls in advance. That will be a credit side. Now the last entry will refer to the calls due or rather the final call due and receipt. Now in terms of final call we are supposed to expect 50,000 is the amount that we are supposed to receive. That means share final call account debit to the specific share capital account will be credited. But when it comes to received entry the amount that we are supposed to receive is only 48,000 because we have already received calls in advance here. So the entry we have passed here is bank account debit, calls in advance account debit to share final call. Share final call will be credited with 50,000. The bank account will be debited with 48,000 and the balancing figure will be 2,000 which is calls in advance that we have already mentioned there. Now the next entry will be an optional entry rather we'll just mention it to you. The next entry will refer to the interest that is being paid here. So the interest is supposed to be paid by the company to the client here because he has paid that money in advance. So the entry will be interest on calls in advance to bank account. This will be the reflection or rather this will be referred as an amount that is paid at 6% interest on any amount that we have received. So basically if there are dates given to you as in from this date we have received or rather this date that amount was called up and this date the amount was ideally supposed to be called up whatever difference of days is there. Ideally in this question we haven't been given any details since we are not passing that entry because we will be requiring an amount over there. However, if there was any date that was mentioned as to the calls or rather whenever the call were made. So application was made on 1st of Jan. If the call was made on 1st of Feb and then the final call was supposed to be done on 1st of March. So any person who has paid the money in advance that means for those many days we have to provide the interest to them. In this case, in this scenario, we have no dates available with us. Hence, we are not able to calculate the amount. However, the entry will be very simple. Interest on calls in advance account debit to bank account with the amount that is being paid up at 6% interest per annum. So that can be calculated for the number of tenure or rather number of months that you're providing the interest on. So this is all what we had to discuss when it comes to calls in advance. I hope this video has given you a clarity about how calls in advance entries are supposed to be passed and how the interest calculation is rather supposed to be done whenever it is supposed to be calculated for the number of tenure or rather at the rate of interest which is provided in the question. If not, you have to assume it to be 6%. So thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and keep subscribing to Ikeda.